Sometimes you have to send a really large file or perhaps you just have a file that's taking up way too much room and you want to do something about it, but you don't want to delete the file. So what do you do? Well, the answer to that question is that you compress the file and then the question you have to ask after that is how do you do that? So what I want to do today is talk to you about how to compress files on Linux. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to do this in the terminal simply because I think that it's easier and more cross-platform. And when I mean more cross-platform, I mean it works across distros and desktop environments where both GNOME and KDE come with their own archiving tools. This will so here we are in the terminal. Now this will work in any terminal emulator. It doesn't really matter which one. It doesn't matter what desktop environment you're in or what distro you're using. I'm using OpenSUSE. I'm in Qtile, but I could be in any different window manager or desktop environment. It wouldn't matter. So we are in a directory here. And if I do an LS, you'll see that I have some things in here and I have the outcome of where we're going and I have where I began. So I have a directory here called test one. And if we go into test one, you'll just see that I have some random files in there, right? There's, it doesn't really matter what this is. We'll go back up a level and we'll see that's what's in this directory. Now, the question is, how do we get from that to the test.tar.gz or the test1.zip? Now, first, let's talk about differences. So tar is called a tarball. This is just one way of compressing a file. It uses a certain type of compression. It's usually, and it's not always the case, but usually better for much larger files. So if you have something that's really, really big, chances are tar is where you're gonna wanna go. If you have a collection of smaller files, zip is better. Now, the reason why that seems to be true, and this is just my basic understanding of it, is that you can use different types of compression with tar, whereas zip uses just the compression that zip uses. So you can kind of determine how efficient tar is where zip is kind of stuck in the mud or stuck in its way of doing things. So if that didn't make any sense to you, it really doesn't matter. You can use either one of them. The process is simple for one, a little bit more complicated for the other. So I'm gonna show you both ways. First, let's start with tar. So I have the directory test one and I wanna use tar to compress it. So to do that, I use the command tar and then I have to add some flags. Now flags are where this gets a little complicated because you have to know what they mean. So the first flag we need is to do dash C and basically what this does and what this means is that we wanna create a brand new archive. Now the term archive really doesn't mean anything in this context, that's basically just what they call a compressed file, is an archive. So when you see a GUI program called an unarchiving tool or an archiving tool, that's what basically what we're doing here. We're archiving one file into a compressed version of itself. So the term archiving really just means we wanna create a new compressed file. So that's the C flag. The next one we wanna, we wanna do is do Z. Now this one can be changed once you learn what you're doing, but Z is pretty much what we wanna use here. And this is, determines the type of compression. In this case, we wanna use the gzip compression. And that's basically an algorithm that tells the computer how to compress something. Now, there are different types of algorithms. They're all different in terms of efficiency and resource usage. And this is why I said earlier, tar is much better for larger files because you can change this and make your compression of your files more efficient, faster, those types of things. But in this case, we're just gonna use Z. The next one we wanna use is V. Now this is an optional flag. This just means you want a verbose output. You don't want to have just no output at all. You want it to show you that it worked. So just use the V. Usually when you see V in a command line situation, what it means is either verbose or ver version. In this case, it means verbose. It just means you want to see the output. And the last one we wanna do is we want to set a file name. So we wanna use the flag F. Now, if you are a terminal person, you know things about the terminal. Chances are you, you're, you're used to seeing an output like this, source file and destination file. That's usually the way things work when it comes to a terminal command. In this case, we need to switch those things around. So we wanna give it a name. So in this case, we want to call it test1.tar.gz, like so. 
And the name there is important, so we want to tell it that it's a .tar and that the .gz just basically denotes the compression that we used. So then we want to give it the source file. In this case, we want to use test1. And then we just hit enter. So it, we're going to now do an ls here, and we'll see that we now have the file that we created, test1.tar.gz. And that my friends, is a compressed file. Okay, so now that we have that compressed, I'm actually going to show you how to uncompress that file, just so that you know. And you can do this basically in the same way, you're just using one flag that's different. So first we're gonna remove test one. So I'm gonna do rm-rf test one. That way when we do an ls, that file or directory is gone. So in order to un compress the file that we just created we're going to use the same command tar and we're going to do some flags just look like we did before there's one flag that's different however so instead of c we're going to use x and then we're going to use z v f and then we'll just use the test one dot tar dot gz so let me talk about that for just one second so i'm actually going to control c so you can we can do some things here so we're gonna, i'm going to show you that remember if you remember this it was dash dash c z v f to compress the file so notice the differences there c is for create x is for extract that's how you remember it and you'll have no idea how long it took me to figure that out and be clever about it so c create x is for extract so we're going to extract this so we're going to do tar dash x z v f and then the name of the directory so that's test1.tar.gz and we're gonna enter do an ls and now you'll see we have our file back completely uncompressed there you go that is the method of tar to compress and uncompress a file now like with everything that happens in the terminal tar has a ton of different options so if you want to know more about it you can go in here and see all the flags that it has including different compression algorithms that you can use like all of these or any other the other million of options that are here you can find those things and figure out how to use them they're just a matter of different flags and like i said at the beginning which you use is going to determine how big your file that you're trying to compress is, how powerful your computer is, and all that stuff. All that stuff can, plays a role into it. The way I showed you how to do it is the most simple and probably the one you'll use the most often. So I highly recommend once you learn the basics, go into the man page and give it a look. It will help you out, but it'll also probably confuse you. So uh, just be patient with it. All right, so if we go back to our directory here, we'll see that I also have one here. It's called test1.zip. Now, zip is a much more simpler way of compressing a file. So I'm actually going to remove test1.zip. That way it's just gone. Now, this requires an application that isn't always on a distribution. So you may have to do, uh, you may have to install it. So in my case, I'm on OpenSUSE. I would have to do sudo zipper in zip, I believe. If I could spell, I'm not actually sure if that's the name of the, the package on OpenSUSE or not. I believe OpenSUSE actually does have this installed, but if it isn't on your distro, you may have to install it. I'm not sure which distros come with it, which ones don't. So just do some research there. So in order for us to zip this file, we have to use the command zip. And then we're going to, again, switch things around a little bit. So we're going to do test1.zip and then the des or the source file. Hit enter and then do an ls, and we now see we have a test1.zip. That was a little bit easier, right? There's not much that you need to remember when it comes to using zip. You now have a compressed file using the .zip format, just like you do with tar, but without having to remember any of those crazy flags. Now, zip does have some flags that you can use, I believe. You can go into their man page and see that there are some things that you can do with zip in order to make it more complicated. I believe you can do things like compress multiple files at a time. I don't believe you can do that with tar. I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that that's true. So there's a ton of different things that you can do with zip. And again, the best way to find out how to do those more complicated things is to look at the man page. So overall, that is how you compress files on Linux. Now, 
One thing I will say is that you do not have to do this in the terminal. You can do this with a graphical application. The reason why I showed you how to do it in the terminal, like I said at the beginning, is simply because this can be taken on any distro, any desktop environment, and it will just work without having to really install anything. Tar usually comes installed. Zip also usually comes installed, although I think there's some distros that don't have it installed. So just know that this is the more universal way of doing it. But if you are someone who uses a GUI and would prefer to use a GUI, both GNOME and KDE come with something called the, an archiving tool. They're called different things. You can use those things directly from your file manager to compress and uncompress a file. How to do those things will require you to figure that out. But if you are just slightly competent in the terminal, this is probably the best way to do it just because knowing here means you know everywhere. So that is it for this video. If you have questions or comments about this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know as a tutorial, this was a little bit bumpy, but I haven't done a tutorial in a while, so I had to kind of shake off the rust. So if you have... Uh, complaints or comments again comments in the comment section below you can follow me on Mastodon that link will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast or you can support me on YouTube or Kofi those links will be in the video description thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and YouTube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much for your support if you too want to support me patreon.com slash Linux cast as I said or you can head over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find awesome hats like the one that's right behind me. I guess it's over this direction. <laughs> we might learn how to, how, how to point. Shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find hats like that one or shirts or t-shirts and all sorts of awesome stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.